In this video, I want to talk about the hidden contrast increasing adjustments that Lightroom sneaks into your images in the background, unbeknownst to you. Here we've got an eagle. He's looking quite nice and handsome, isn't he? Eh? What a regal bird. And yes, I've just done a quick process on him and we've got a bit of a crop on the image. But if I go to reset and this is what the bird looks like when I bring the raw file straight into Lightroom. And yes, he's a little bit on the dark side. The exposure's not quite as far to the right as I would have liked, but he's got an excessive amount of contrast in him. And you'll notice that in the clipping indicator for the shadow area, I've got clipping in the blue channel. Now, you might think, yeah, well, just go and increase the clipping and increase the shadows, Andy. But really and truly, a lot of people used to ask me this, and I did quite a few articles related to uh, neutralizing contrast in Lightroom in the previous iteration of Lightroom before it went to Classic CC. Did quite a few posts on my blog over that. Then suddenly we've got this new iteration of uh, Lightroom, this Classic CC iteration, and people have started me uh, started asking me the question all over again andy can we still do a process version swap well the answer is yes nothing has changed and the thing is lightroom still does these background contrast increasing adjustments which really and truly we don't want to be trying to neutralize with sliders and bear, bear in mind, I've just said we don't want to try and neutralize them. A lot of people don't even realize that they're there. And these contrast increases that are buried away in the background actually hide detail captured in your sensor. And before I actually reprocess this image, I'm going to go to another image, this one down here, and I'm going to use this image to actually show you how much detail is being hidden by Lightroom with its default import settings. Now, if I close out the details panel and I close out the lens corrections panel, all I want to see is the top part of the camera calibration panel, the tone curve and the basics panel. So as you can see, if we look at the thumbnail down here, we've got no settings applied to this image. So this is, if you like, a direct import straight out of the camera. And it is, if you look at the histogram, it is exposed well to the right. Good old practice of ETTR. But there is no clipping in the highlights. However, it looks overexposed. And I know an awful lot of people who are not familiar with Lightroom would actually think about binning this image or skipping past it and not bothering to process it now it, it's as i said before it's a fairly pants image um shot at fairly high iso and um, so it has got a bit of noise on the go in it but really and truly it wouldn't really matter uh, whether it was at such a high iso i forget what the iso is it's probably around about six thousand or something like that but really and truly the iso doesn't matter if we'd actually exposed this image at a lower ISO, but exposed it this far to the right under the same lighting conditions that we've got going on in this scene, it would still display in Lightroom exactly like it's displaying. So we'll go out to a fit to screen view. And all I'm going to do is do a process version swap so you can see actually how much detail Lightroom is hiding detail that is actually captured by the sensor, but you can not see it very well at all. The first thing I want to do is to change this camera profile from Adobe Standard, which is bloody awful, and we'll switch that out to camera neutral. And straight away, you can see we've we've got a little bit more detail coming out of the head area because the image has got ever so slightly darker. If I swap that back out again and go back to camera standard and just watch the histogram up here and we'll go and swap it back out to camera neutral and you can see we've got quite a noticeable shift to the left of the histogram. 
Now, this image is in process version 4, which is the current one which ships with Lightroom Classic CC. And if we actually look here, we've got process version 3, which is PV 2012. And we've got process version 2, which is PV 2010. We've also got the initial version which came out with the original iteration of Lightroom, but we'll leave that well alone. We'll go back to PV 2010 and we'll select that. And now you can see we've actually generated some clipping in the highlights area because it's red and it is in the green channel. Now, some people might do this and say, oh, I better go and correct that. No, don't need to. The crucial thing to see or to notice is the fact that the tone curve, if I go and swap this back again because you might have missed it, put it back to PV2000 and, well, the current one, uh, process version 4, and you'll notice that according to Lightroom, we're on a linear tone curve, and according to Lightroom, we've got no basic panel adjustments going on. But the reality of it is this. PB2010 and the original version 1 of the Pro Lightroom process um, algorithm used to actually display the hidden, or, well, they weren't hidden, were they? But it actually used to display the default input settings that it used to apply to your image. Whereas process version 2012 and the current one don't. And that medium contrast tone curve which is actually applied to the image purports to be a linear tone curve the zero adjustments or zero slider adjustments um, are not really true they are actually like that so this is the adjustment that's going on in the background but the sliders are set to zero so all we're going to do is actually go and zero those adjustments. And there you go. Now you can see all the detail that's been captured by this sensor of your camera. Okay. So it, it's quite a shock, isn't it? And why Adobe do this, I've no idea. Because decent raw processors like Iridium Developer and Raw Therapy don't do this. They don't, they just show you the raw file. Why Adobe have to put these accoutrements on, uh, these bells and whistles? Uh, I have no idea because people who, people like myself who want to do big prints from their images, we have to be very pixel conscious, if you like. And so we have to spend half our time when we, when we start processing actually correcting the crappy adjustments that Lightroom applies to your images in the background. So now you can see what a process version swap can do for an image. We'll now go back to our original eagle. This eagle is slightly underexposed, um, but we're not going to worry about that for the moment. We're going to do a straightforward process version swap to neutralize all the background adjustments that Lightroom's put on. As you can see, we've got a little bit of clipping in the blue channel, and they will be in these areas here. If we just blow them up to 100%, you can see them under there. And yeah, you might be tempted to go and lift up the shadow adjustment slider and try and pull them back, but we don't actually need to touch any sliders. This is the beauty of it. We don't need to do any adjustments to this image at this juncture in order to get contrast under control. So what we'll do is we'll come back out to a fit to screen view and I will swap this out from Adobe standard to camera neutral. And this is on a uh, shot on the Canon 1DX Mark II, um, just so as you know. And uh, we'll swap out from version four to version two. And now you can see we can now visually get an eyeball on this hidden medium contrast tone curve that's been applied and these hidden well they're not hidden anymore hardly we can see them but these uh, basics panel slider adjustments so we'll go over to the presets and we'll hit zeroed and now the image has gone quite dark but you can see now 
we've got a perfect linear tone curve on and all these sliders are now set to zero. We'll now go and swap back to the current process version or version four and then all I'm going to do is to come back into lens corrections and hit remove chromatic aberration or come back into the details panel and I'll double click on color to bring back the color noise reduction and I suppose I might as well go and put the default sharpening on but that's not something I'd really do but I'll do it just because I can and just because I'm here um, it's not exactly critical to the, uh, to the uh, process but then I'm going to bring the exposure back now the thing is that when you do this process version swap and come back to the latest iteration of the process version that Lightroom uses to demosaic and process your raw files initially and um, it can throw a bit of a reddish tint onto your sort of dark orangey browns and your darker yellows and it's not obvious in Lightroom how to get rid of red if you just think about it though what two secondary colors go together to make red the answer is yellow and magenta so we've got access to the yellow content of the image up here on the temperature slider and we've got access to the magenta component of the image on the tint slider so all I'm going to do is drop about 600 out of um, the temperature slider so I'm going to take that down to 5300 and we'll hit return and then I'm going to double click inside the tint slider and take that back to zero and there we go um, maybe take that up to one actually because it looks a little bit green no I'll, I'll oh that's gone to 10 silly boy one and there we go that looks okay for me I might actually go and put a little bit of extra um, exposure in this image and um, we'll take it up by 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.3 of a stop maybe take it up to 0.4 of a stop um, not 0 0.35 what does that look like yeah that looks better I'm actually now going to thump all the contrast back in that we originally took out with the actual process of uh, swapping over the process versions i'm going to put it back in because really and truly the contrast slider for this particular image isn't having as much effect on the contrast as this inverted s-shaped tone curve or process version swap tone curve if i actually put this back to a linear tone curve now we can see how much contrast we've got in that bird so the actual inverted s-shaped curve that's generated by the process version swap is actually the crucial thing for getting rid of the greatest percentage of these hidden background contrast adjustments that Lightroom is inordinately guilty of imparting onto your images and why Adobe do this I've got absolutely no idea so anyway just to uh, finish it off I think we'll we'll leave the highlights where they are I might just lift the shadows up a little bit and um, what we're gonna do bum, 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 bum. I think I might take those up to about 30 yeah and will it return I think I'm just going to take the whites up as well I might take those up to probably about plus 20 something like that I'm going to leave the blacks where they are I'm just going to put a little tint of, hint of clarity in there tint of clarity what am I talking about yeah there we go and I'm, I'm quite happy with that now if we want to look at how those settings would look without the PV swap tone curve if we just put the default lie of linear yeah now you can see <laughs> it's just got plain too much contrast in it so we'll swap that back out to where it was and i'm quite happy with that image i think it looks cracking it's just a little bit lopsided so we'll just go and add a quick crop to it and if i go to my um, custom crops i have a 4.2 by 5.94 crop preset 
in there and that basically is for any A size paper so I'll just scoot along and then I'll just shrink it just a little bit and uh, yeah there we go he's a little bit big in the frame but hey ho so uh, there we go one processed image done very quickly with the minimum of fuss after having negated all the crappy adjustments that Lightroom hides from you in the background and we've basically just got contrast under control and uh, we've got a quick process that looks quite cool okay so i hope you've enjoyed that i hope you found it useful it's um a process version swap is something i do to the majority of my images the majority of the time because i like to control where the contrast goes in my images and i do not like a lot of contrast in my shadow areas or in my highlight areas and those are the two areas that suffer with the hidden lightroom adjustments so now you know how to neutralize those adjustments without any effort at all I hope you've enjoyed that I hope you found it useful if you have go give me a like go click the subscribe button if you didn't like it please yourself so uh, i shall see you well or speak to you very soon in my next video toodaloo